Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Liz. Thank you for stopping by. I am here with another unboxing. Today I have the Mausolea Oracle Cards of Souls, or I should say Oracle of Souls, and it is illustrated by Jason Engel. Now, I don't know if that's just the illustrator. This is a Los Scarabeo deck. Those are always a little weird as far as like um, the credits and that. I'm just looking to see if there's a different name. I probably should have done this. Just says illustrated by Jason Engel. This, I got this deck because there's a couple of um, deities, entities in here that I'm really interested in. It, I guess it's um, more of a dark deck. And it even says here, a unique dark fantasy world where myths and legends are woven together to create a tapestry of souls. I got it on magic.com. It's 36 cards with a book. I'm going to guess the book is tiny because it's usually the little Scarabio books well they're not necessarily tiny but they have um all these different languages so it looks like six different languages and that's why some i'll say the book is tiny because a lot of times it is small and i think it's going to be tiny it's kind of a cool deck though like it's all black that's black it's got a black ribbon <laughs> It's one of those dark ones. I actually got, I guess, I got the Dark Mirror also to kind of go along with this set because I heard it goes along really, really well with it. So we'll see because I'll be doing that one next after I do this video or maybe tomorrow. All right, so let's see how many pages we got for English. Um, 32. And actually, it's less than that because it really starts on page five. So that's about English, which is fine because it's got descriptions of the cards. I don't know how good they are. We shall see. You know, and the rest are on the other uh, languages. They are kind of cool, though. I, I like the look of these cards. They're different. And, you know, I just had my scissors out, and I think I put it back in. I always forget that these have... Um, both plastic wrapping inside and out. I wish it would stop with the plastic wrapping, honestly, and just put like a little tab on. Not the card. The cards inside don't need to be wrapped. I don't know why they do that, but like on the sides here, you know, because you don't need all this plastic wrapping. It's just like a huge waste to me. And you know, I'm I try to be conscious, environmentally conscious of stuff. And a lot of this wrap just isn't really good. And you can't even recycle it because it's so thin. Of course, I can't. I have to pause this for a second so I can grab my scissors. Okay. Let's see. This should rip easily now. So it's 36 cards. Los Carabao cards, they run the gamut. They can be nice or they can be, like, crappy quality. You know, these seem nice. Oh, actually, they are nice. Hmm. They are shiny. I mean, you can see the glare, but that I will try to minimize it, you know, with the lighting I have going on here. Um, that's the back. Look how interesting this back is. It looks like it's got, um, oh, I would call those maybe sigils or one sigil. Like it's got these up here, but then it's got all a bunch of different stuff underneath it. It's got all this depth. Hmm. I like it. All right. So let's see. I saw these online on other things, other um, pages and uh, uh, I should say channels. And I thought they were really interesting. All right. So Abraham, justice of pandemonium, justice, truth, duty. The travelers, keeper of the crossroads, restlessness, independence, appraisal. They're very different. This is just, they're a little bit creepy, some of them. Not all of them. All of them are not. The thinker, the father of knowledge, knowledge, instruction, reinvention. They really don't have much of a border, just the top and the bottom here. And they have, um, uh, what was I thinking just now? I think oh, no numbers, which 
I always wish they have numbers, but whatever. The Exile, Forsaken Soldiers, Strategy, Failure, Trauma. I mean, these are more fantasy type things. They're really, the artwork is beautiful. As creepy as it can be, it's actually very beautiful. The Maestro, Master of Inspiration, Understanding, Community, Ingenuity. Poet of Avon, The Storyteller, Fame, Stagnation, Pride. Hades, Lord of Riches, Equanimity, Wisdom, Inevitability. Now, I thought Hades was always the Lord of the Underworld, so don't know. You know what? Maybe I'll hold that one back and we'll check on that. Vanth, Caretaker of the Lost, Respite, Assistance, Memory. I love her. She is gorgeous. Love it. Um, I'm going to say that's Sharon. The Ferryman, Necessity, Focus, Transition, Mother of Dawn, The Emissary, Beauty, Agency, Compassion. I love this card. Gorgeous. Thanatos or Thanatos. I'm saying I don't, I'm probably murdering it, but I'm trying. Warden of Dis, Completion, Support, Expediency. I love this one. Nyx, Enchantress of Night, Secrets, Vigilance, Subterfuge. I believe Nyx is a Greek goddess. Greek, I think goddess of the night, I believe. Arawan, Master of the Great Hunt, Authority, the Hunt, Natural Balance. Author, Champion of uh, the Champion of Avalon, Championship, Nobility, Self Realization. That's beautiful. The artwork is very lovely. Here's one that I love the Morgan. I love, love the Morgan. And this is a really interesting representation of her. The Morgan, Weaver of Fate, and Antipathy, Introspection, Opposition. I'm going to hold that one back. Now we have Morgan Le Fay. Like some people say the Morgan is more, the Morgan is Morgan Le Fay. That is really not the uh, history. Morgan Le Fay is from uh, the Arthurian legends in England, whereas the Morgan is an Irish goddess. So, and there is a lot more to it than that. I'm just, that's what um, I've read from people who actually do. Uh, work with the Morgan and are very well versed. So, uh, Mor Morgan Le Fay, the Witch of Ages, Atonement, Growth, Deceit. What a beautiful card, though, huh? Gorgeous. Danu, another one that I absolutely love. Mother of Creation, Motherhood, Ferocity, and Creation. Danu actually might, might be, or I think is known as the mother of... She is the mother of the Tuatha Dé Danann in uh, Irish legend, but she's, I think, the also the mother of the Morrigan. <clears throat> Pretty sure. Dawn, the Red Shepherd, Just Reward, Evaluation, Respite. That's different. They're, these are all very fantasy-like. Irish Kagal. Queen of Shadows, Wrath, Instability, Suspicion. Rishkagal, that's um, familiar to me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I believe also these have these different symbols down here. I believe they have like different um, houses. Let me just check real quick. Something like that. There is a... Um, there is a method to them, whatever. It, hold on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a, I forget what I heard. Okay, so this is, re, no, hold on. Uh, Republic of Pandemonium. Hold on a second here. Dominion of Duat. Okay, so there's different ones. Republic of Pandemonium, Dominion of Duat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Um, 
Okay, hold on one second. Kingdom of Hades. Yeah, the Kingdom of Hades. Republic of Pandemonium, Kingdom of Hades, or Hades. The Afterworld of Anwen. Did I say Arwen? I thought it was, okay. And the Empire of Ercala. <coughs> Excuse me. Dominion of Duat. The Realm of Sheol. <clears throat> and that's it. <coughs> I wish it stated that in the back of the box. I'm sorry. I have some incense burning. If for some reason it's bothering my throat. Um, and each, there's these, like the, the Republic of Panama, there's a, a quick description of it. And then there's the, um, cards that belong to it, which are one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe they're, but they're probably all six cards. And it explains what the, those particular kingdoms are, you know? So that's. When I get into that, I will look that up and I'll read it. I'll read from the Republic, so or whatever, whatever the the Kingdom, just the first little thing, and then whatever cards I have, I will um, try to read from from there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, the Prince, the Forgotten Adversary, Sorrow, Lost Valor, Serendipity. Hmm. Ooh, Lilith, Thief of Life. Hunger, animalism, instinct. And look at her. She's got, look at those huge fingernails. She's got blood on her mouth, blood on her neck. You know, that's one representation of her. People have different ideas. Martyr, matron of the blind, honesty, shame, restitution. Eternal servitor, the ancient wanderer, hope. Incompleteness, yearning, different, very different. Lady of Masks, the Shaper, Reclamation, Vanity, Surface Appearances. It just got a mask. I, I actually just noticed that. Hmm. Osiris. And see, the, it's changed. That's how you know which thing it belongs to, which house, I guess I would call it. There's a different one here. That one has an Ankh. This one has, a, is that a seven-pointed star? Something like that. And yeah, there's a couple other ones. Uh, I think there might be six different ones. Osiris, God King of Duat. Commitment, Acquisition, Responsibility. Matriarch, Mother of Homestead. Rejection, Opportunities, Consequences. It's funny because it's like, it's got three different, Keywords and they're so different from each other, so I guess it just depends on how you're reading the cards around it. Hmm. That's very beautiful, though. Golden Empress, Jewel of Abydos, Potency, Confidence, Magnetism. That's beautiful. Oh, Hathor. I love Hathor. She's another one that I really love. Hathor, Mistress of Harmony, Meditation, Communication, Culture. I believe Hathor is the goddess of love in um, uh, Egypt. Anubis, Arbiter of Truth, Preservation, Neutrality, Obligation. Set, Prince of Avarice, Short-Sightedness, Ambition, Narcissism. Set is supposed to have killed Osiris. He's his brother, and he's not very nice, according to the stories. El Shaddai, the Radiant Lord. Wisdom, Paternalism, Kindness. And this one has a different symbol from the others. So this is the last house. Abaddon, <clears throat> Overlord of the Abyss. Pestilence, Corruption, Malice. So that might be like the devil. Jeanette the Maid, Guardian of Saints, Humility, Disillusionment, Champion. So this is, or oh, I'm sorry, Jean the Maid. <laughs> I heard, I saw Jeanette, but Jean the Maid. This would be um, St. Saint Saint Joan of Arc or St. Jean the Arc, you know. 
Uh, definitely get that vibe from there, and I'm pretty sure that's that's who that is. You know what? Let's find out. The Leper King, Sword of Law, Bravery, Self-Discipline, Faith. The Ageless, the Light in the Darkness, Healing, Graciousness, Acceptance. That's beautiful, too. It's like, is it a male? Is it a female? It could be either or. It's kind of uh, ambiguous that way. I like that. The Keeper of Whiskers, the Mad Prophet, Curiosity, Madness, Forbidden Knowledge. Ooh, very cool. These are so pretty. Ugh, beautiful. I mean, they're pretty in a creepy kind of way, <laughs> but they are beautiful. I mean, the artwork is amazing. All right, let's see what we got going on here. We got uh, Hades, the Morgan, um, Danu, and Jean the Maid. All right, let's see what the book says about this thing here. All right, let's do this real quick here. Mausolea Oracle Cards. Death comes to all mortals, and when their time is upon them, it is but a beginning, a door to another world. Mausolea is a vision of the world beyond the, uh, the place our souls may travel to after death. It is a place that is knit together from many of the stories that exist in all corners of the ancient world, full of heroes and gods of myth and legend. It is the true essence of these personalities and the stories they inhab inhabit. Inhibit? No, inhabit. That is intended to lend insight and reveal, reveal hidden truths of our own lives and the path we travel. The spirit world of Mausolea is compromised of countless realms, and this deck contains six of these great kingdoms. Okay, kingdoms. Each reflection of their own world, and from each of these has been selected six inhabitants who best represent certain qualities and ideals. It is the power of these personalities and traits that illuminate the path before you. Two methods can be useful for reading these, uh, reading with these cards, the Way of Paths and the Great Wheel. And those are, um, what do you call it, uh, spreads that they have here. Okay. All right. So then it gives you an idea how to work with the cards. Hmm. I'm going to probably try one of these. It looks interesting. The Great Wheel, Traveler's Guide, The Call, The Nature Path, Uncanny A, Threshold, Guardian Challenges, Temptations, The Abyss. Revelation, Transformation, Atonement, and Return. Hmm. Okay. And I also have a website, mausolea.com. So that would probably be good. Uh, the Republic of Pandemonium. A city, the city of Pandemonium and its surrounding lands belong not to the gods, but to the archons of human achievement. These icons bound themselves in life not to gods or fates, but to human ideals, becoming idols and objects of veneration in their own way. To dwell in pandemonium is to still be bound by the temporal goals and abilities of human life, whether the glory of success or the haunting specter of failure. Mm. Okay. Let's see. The kingdom of Hades. The realm of Hades is next to pandemonium, the most mortal of the domains. It is perhaps due to the in intensely human nature of the gods that dwell in and adjacent to it. To dwell in Hades is to express the care of the dead, for the living and of inevitability of human nature and the possibility of change even past the point of no return hmm. okay i like this this is different this seems like a very deep uh kind of deck you know you're not going to use this one lightly that's for sure the afterworld of our oh, why do i keep saying oh, okay there is r1 so it's on when the Domain of Anwen is the ancient hunting ground of the gods, a land of myth and folklore. It is both wild and unpredictable and bound by traditions, customs, and rituals such as and rituals as old as time itself. To dwell in Anwen is to be both bound and wild, ancient and childlike, fair and bestial. Wow. Okay. And yeah, let's see. What's the other one? Um... Dominion of Duat. Dominion of Duat is a center of secrets, ritual of mystery, and its temples and desert monuments, the true nature of being, reality, and creation are hidden, unlock, on, unlocked only through adherence to its rites and rituals. To dwell in Duat is to face the realities most high from most thoroughly. How well do you know yourself, your desires, and whether your heart and intentions are pure? For in Duat, these will surely be judged. Okay. 
the realm of Sheol. Like Urkala, the realm of Sheol is concerned with bright and dark dualities, where Urkala focuses on the emotional experience. How emotional experience, however, Sheol centers the extremes of human sin and holiness. To dwell in Sheol is to submit to the judgment of the absolute, to suffer between the difficult requirements of grace and the easy torments of corruption, and to have the courage to discover where you fall in your overall contribution of good to the world or evil. Okay. That's it. Did I miss one? I'm just Realm of Sheol. Dominion of Duat. I don't think I missed one, but let me just make sure I thought. Um, the Empire of Kala. Oh, I did miss this one. The Empire of Urkala. Um, a realm of bright and dark dualities. In Urkala, sorrow and joy are shared and balanced in equal measure. The gods of Urkala value obligation and sacrifice. Few who entered this domain are ever permitted to leave again. To dwell in Urkala is to accept the obligations of society, to seek a simple, finite existence, to understand the balance between one's rational mind and one's emotional experience. Hmm. All right. I, it's different. It's different. I can honestly see myself, like, looking at these pictures, reading those descriptions, and kind of my mind kind of wandering. All right. So let's go to... Lord of Riches. Hey, okay, I went right to it. I'm just wondering if there is a not a glossary. Would that be a glossary where you can find the pages? No, that's going to be a little difficult to find them. So, huh? There's not even a area where you can find the particular. Okay, well, that's going to be a kind of a pain in the neck to try to find. All right, that right there is a strike against the book, which I'm not surprised. All right, so Hades, or Hades, Lord of Riches. Unlike the decadent fickle gods of Olympus, Hades cares more for the people under his rule than he does for his own pleasure. He endures their sneers and abuses with equanimity. Focus on his, on his goals and his responsibilities, knowing that eventually all will come to, to an end in his realm. Hades reminds us to ignore petty, unworthy tr distractions and to focus on that which will make a real difference in the world. Domains, equanimity, wisdom, and inevitability. That's so funny. I keep getting this call about stopping with the distractions, and I picked that card, wouldn't you know? All right, then Morrigan, and she is in... All right, she is in the realm of the Anwin, Weaver of Fate. Demigoddess, shapeshifter, riddler, trickster, and temptress of here of the heroes. The Morgan is an agent agent of chaos in all ways more than she appears. She favors the form of a large black crow and enjoys a spectacle of battle. The Morgan is the tester of skill as well as of will, tempting heroes away from their true goals and desires. She challenges our self knowledge and our abilities, pushing us ever towards true understanding of who we are. The bad as well as the good. Oh, I love that. I do not see her as a temptress. And there would be people that would definitely take um, objection to that. So um, she is a goddess of war. Not a goddess of sex, you know. Not from, what the, not from the, the people who really have studied her. All right. So Danu, mother of creation. Danu is the mother of. Mother goddess of creation in Anwen, and all of the fair folk are descended from her, the, the she, which are the fairy folk. She supports all creative pursuits and typ typifies the benevolent mother principle of fertility, wisdom, creativity, and abundance. However, that which creates a thing also protects it fiercely. Danu teaches us of the double-edged sword of creation and civilization. The benevolent mother that nurtures and guides us with gentle wisdom on the one hand or the other on the one hand, on the other, the ferocious beast dam that will destroy all who threaten those she calls her children. I love that. I love Danu. Danu is um, one that I really connect with. And Jean the Maid, uh, let's see, where is she at? What? Um, 
in the Maid Dominion of Duat. Is she in the Dominion of Duat? No, she's in the Realm of Shield. Yep, Realm of Shield. This right here, this, this I do not like at all. There should be an easier way to find uh, the card you're looking for. This is just lousy, honestly. I, you know, and I blame um, Los Scarabeo for that because they know better than to, you know, this is just it's just a poorly done way to uh, find the card that you need. I don't like it. Sorry. So, Guardian of Saints. Is that what it says on there for her? Yeah, it does. Guardian of Saints. The Shepherd of Lost Souls and Sheol, Jean, was a noble and pious hero in life. Martyred for her trouble, she pers pers I'm sorry, she martyred for her trouble. She prefers to avoid the politics and machinations of Mausolea and on the whole, serving instead those who need her help and who who cannot help themselves. Jean demonstrates the world readiness weariness of those who have given us given as much as they can. That it can be wise to eschew the larger, more cyn cynical conflicts for doing real tangible good in a local way a champion does not require a global stage yeah it is about um saint jean, saint jean of arc yeah the poor girl you know goes out wins the war and they burn her for it that'll that'll learn you won't it you know you wear men's clothes shame on you oh i have so much i could say about that but i won't it's just a terrible injustice in this world Anyway, so I like this deck. It's a really cool deck. I don't like the book. I do like the write-up on it. The write-ups are fine. The descriptions of the different kingdoms, that's fine. Uh, I wish I had a little bit more, you know, on that. Because I think it would be really interesting to kind of, like, delve into the kingdoms. I just can't, don't like that to find the cards, you have to find the kingdom, which there's no glossary for it. And then, you if you're, you don't know exactly what these little whatever they're called, symbols are, what they mean. So it's kind of silly. I don't, I don't like that. Other than that, I do like the deck. I think it's a beautiful deck. It wasn't that expensive at all. I got it, um, I want to say it was probably $15 around that on magic.com. Like I said, you guys, if you're not shopping magic, you're missing out. Especially if you can live, they have a program through them where you pay every two weeks. So you can get $100 worth of, decks and whatever else because they have a bunch of other things on there they have statues they have um crystals they have uh incense they have everything and you could pay every couple of weeks and for for two months i believe it's a total of four payments every two weeks it's a no-brainer you know <laughs> can't if you have a hundred dollars and you pay it over two months you know it's 25 bucks a week you're not even gonna miss that so I like it. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Have a perfect day wherever you are. Blessings and thank you.